Hello, welcome. This is uh, the next three chapters of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. We're picking up where we left off around last month. I uh, had a great uh, holiday season, Christmas season, wonderful new year, and now we're getting right back in. All right, chapter 28. It was a long time before anyone spoke. Out of the corner of his eye, Fook could see the sea of tense, expectant faces down in the square outside. We're going to get lynched, aren't we? he whispered. It was a tough assignment, said Deep Thought mildly. Forty-two, yelled Lunquall. Is that all you've got to show for seven and a half million years' work? I checked it very thoroughly, said the computer, and that quite definitely is the answer. I think the problem, to be quite honest with you, is that you've never actually known what the question is. But it was the great question, the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything, howled Lunquall. Yes, said Deep Thought, with the air of one who suffers fools gladly. But what actually is it? A slow, stupefied silence crept over the men as they stared at the computer and then at each other. Well, you know, it's just everything. Everything, offered Fook weakly. Exactly, said Deep Thought. So once you do know what the question actually is, you'll know what the answer means. Oh, terrific, muttered Folk, flinging aside his notebook and wiping away a tiny tear. Look, all, all right, all right, said Lunkor. Can you please tell us the question? The ultimate question? Yes. Of life, the universe, and everything. Yes, Deep Thought pondered for a moment. Tricky, he said. But can you do it? cried Lunquo. Deep Thought pondered this for another long moment. Finally. No, he said firmly. Both men collapsed onto their chairs in despair. But I'll tell you who can, said Deep Thought. They both looked up sharply. Who? Tell us. Suddenly Arthur began to feel his apparently non-existent scalp begin to crawl as he found himself moving slowly but inexorably forward towards the console but it was only a dramatic zoom on the part of whoever had made the recording, he assumed. I speak of none but the computer that is to come after me, intoned Deep Thought, his voice regaining its accustomed de declamatory tones. A computer whose merest operational parameters I am not worthy to calculate, and yet I will design it for you. A computer that can calculate the question to the ultimate answer. A computer of such infinite and subtle complexity that organic life itself shall form part of its operational matrix, and you yourselves shall take on new forms and go down into the computer to navigate its ten million year program. Yes, I shall design this computer for you, and I shall name it also unto you, and it shall be called the Earth. Falk gaped at deep thought. What a dull name, he said, and great incisions appeared down the length of his body. Loon Qual too, suddenly sustained horrific gashes from nowhere. The computer console blotched and cracked, the walls flickered and crumbled, and the room crashed upwards into its own ceiling. Slanty Bartfast was standing in front of Arthur, holding the two wires. End of the tape, he exclaimed.